Hi submarine friends, welcome back to watching me build my diesel electric submarine. So yesterday I got some new casting uh, resin because I ran out of the old stuff and I made myself an electrical penetrator. So this one is just um, solid core wire going through the resin. So you have to strip off a bit of the plastic shielding so that the copper is sealed into the resin. And another thing I do is I put a little bend, so there's a little S in the copper, so it's not just a straight through, um, so the, the wire is not just going straight through, there's an interruption, so it's like a little Z or a S in there. And that's so that if the wire ever got pulled on really hard, it wouldn't just pull through the epoxy, it, uh, it's trapped in there now. Another thing too is I take a, a knife and I scrape the copper so that you take this shiny material off the surface of it. Anyways, I've been making these for years and years and years. I've never had a problem. Like, I'm sure if I tested this, it would be good for a thousand feet. No problem at all. And this thing's going a hundred feet, so no big deal. So I drilled a hole here and I welded in a fitting, a bushing. So it goes right through here. Now, I can screw it in from the inside or from the outside, and I haven't quite decided which way I'm going to do it, but if I put it from the outside, then I can, it won't stick in as much, and I can just bend the wires around, but I think from the inside is fine too. I don't know, I'll decide that. It really doesn't make any difference. The performance makes no difference. So, two of these wires are for um, the external light which is mounted right above the window here on, on the underside of the ballast tank and it is a oil filled uh, 10,000 lumen LED light bar so it's just one of them short light bars it's about this long and I put the light I, I buy these lights and then I take the LED panel out and I slide it into a vinyl a clear vinyl tube and then I put plastic end caps with one of these electric penetrators through the plastic end cap. And then I fill it with vegetable oil. I like to use vegetable oil in case anything ever fails. I'm not polluting the lakes. So, um, yeah, and they work fantastic. I've tested them to 3,000 feet. No problem. So one of those is going underneath here. So that's for two of the wires. And the other two wires are for future use. So I may put a thruster in the front pointing sideways like a bow thruster on a boat. I don't know yet because I have never operated a submarine this big. The biggest submarine I've had is 6,000 pounds and 16 feet long. This is 27 feet and 9,000 pounds. So I'm not so sure how maneuverable it's going to be. The, my 6,000 pound submarine was really maneuverable. Same setup, rudder, that really is effective. Anyways, so that's what I did. I made this, welded this in, and I also, next thing to talk about, you can see right down here, this is my release mechanism for my emergency drop weight. So the way it works is, there's one of these fittings welded in, then I took a big plug, a stainless steel plug that goes into this fitting and I bored it out and I machined an O-ring groove in it. And then I put in a stainless steel shaft with a big nut on this end, on the inside. And then on the outside, I threaded that shaft. So on the outside is a heavy steel weight with a nut welded to it. And this rod, which rotates in here, is threaded into that nut. So that holds the weight from falling off the submarine. So when I want to release, when I want to release the weight, all I do is I turn this shaft and eventually it just unthreads out of the nut in the weight and it falls off. So what I had to do today, I mean, that's been built for a long time, but I had to build a stopper because when that shaft rotates and comes out of the weight outside, 
that shaft will pop right inside the submarine from the water pressure. There's nothing stopping it. And I don't trust sur clips and those sort of things. I'm paranoid about sur clips. I, know, I mean, sur clips work everywhere and they work well, but anyways, I like this. So this is just a stopper that bolts on. So all I did is I drilled the hole through the side of this nut here so I can put a rod through, Phillips screwdriver, anything, and I can just turn it, you know, quarter turn at a time and it'll unthread and then the rod will pop in and hit this stopper. Simple. It's like an army jeep. Simple. Got to keep it simple. So now that I have that done and I have this done and I also drilled another hole through this rings for the wiring to come through to come up to here, I can now touch up the paint in here. So Everywhere that I welded like this, I'm going to wipe it down with some thinners and then I'm going to paint all these spots because now I'm ready to start um, putting the electrical in so I can wire all this. And I have to figure out how I'm going to mount the LED light bars that I bought for the interior. I mean, they're so puny I could probably just glue them in. Anyways, that's something to think about. So today I'm going to, I'm just going to touch up paint all this now and tomorrow it'll be nice and dry. I got a fan out here. So what I do is I, I blow air through and that helps the paint to dry. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to paint all this stuff. So tomorrow I can start running the wiring. I really enjoy that part. I, you know, it's funny. It's, it's one of my favorite jobs to do and I don't suck at it, but I can't make it as pretty as some of my friends. I've got a couple of friends in my submarine group, and one of them in particular, man, he just does the nicest wiring stuff. Jeez, I'm just jealous. But anyways, I'm going to take my time. I bought that nice wire cable with seven uh, wires in it, so hopefully I can make it real nice and clean. And I like using magnets. So to hold the wire, like the wire that travels along the hull, I just stick a magnet on and I attach the wires to that. I really like using magnets because you can move it around. So anyways, maybe that's how I'll mount my LED lights. I'll put them on magnets. That's an idea. I better order some more magnets today. I can see I'm going to use them a lot. And I'm going to put, uh, you can't see it right now, but this panel that I put in for my my um my battery switch my selector switch i'm going to put some i'm going to put some switches in that also because i don't want to fill up this guy i'm showing you this guy i don't want to fill this up with the only thing i want in this panel is stuff that i need to to turn on and off while i'm physically driving the submarine along so, because it'll be on a cord and I can put it on my lap. So, you know, things like the bilge pumps and stuff like that, you know, I don't want it to climb down and turn something on. But, you know, like turning the forward light on, I mean, I don't need that on there. I mean, if I'm turning the forward light on, it's because I'm sitting right here looking out. So I'm going to put switches here for that. And um, so anything like that... Uh, I may even put the cooling fan for the air conditioning in here. I may even put that on a switch here because I have to run a relay because that fan, I'm pretty sure draws, you know, it might draw 15 amps. So um, I don't want to carry that kind of current through that seven wire bundle that I have. So I'll, um, I'll just put a relay back there because I got big power back there. That comes from the front here that I can tap into. So I'll put a relay in that little box that I built in the back and the fan is right above it. So that'll work out really good. Anyways, I'm going to get painting. Ciao.